Hi everyone, I'm Kate Dunbar, the Campground Gourmet for Rolling on TV. Today we are talking sweet. Sweet for breakfast or sweet for dessert. This is a recipe that is perfect. If you've never tried Camp Dutch Oven cooking before, it doesn't get any simpler than this. We're gonna be using a Camp Dutch Oven. I'm using my Dutch Oven cook table. And we're using fresh fruit, some apples, some pears, and some granola. It is a little bit healthy, but you'll never know it with the sweet flavor of maple syrup, candied ginger, and that warm cinnamon spice. I don't know about you, but when I go camping with my family, sometimes getting fruits and vegetables into my children's bellies is a little difficult. So I try and disguise things as much as I can. With this recipe, you'll be able to create a delicious breakfast that's packed full of granola and nuts and fruit. And you can also use this for dessert over beautiful homemade ice cream. I mean, who doesn't make ice cream when you're at the campground? I know I do, but in the morning you can add Greek yogurt to this and it would be fantastic. Let's get to the ingredients and then the cooking technique. I have some honey crisp apples that this cute little bee is uh, tasting right away for me. I have some canned pears in pear juice. That's the trick. You don't want it in syrup. You want them in the juice because you don't want to add too much sweet to this and you need the light liquid of the juice so everything starts to cook. I have some melted butter, some maple syrup, some slivered almonds, some candied ginger, and like I said, granola and cinnamon. So let's add this all together and then I'm gonna show you why I'm not preheating a Camp Dutch oven for this. In the bowl, and I'm gonna have to disturb this little bee. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. You need to go on your way. I'm gonna add the honey crisp apples. I have three of them that have been chopped up. Like I said, I have that can of pears in pear juice. And now I'm gonna add in the almonds, the candied ginger. This is always a little bit sticky, so mixing it a bit right now, we'll get all those little pieces distributed throughout this dish. Now I'm gonna add in half of the granola. We're gonna add it in now so it has that time to soak up the juices from the pears and from the apples. And then we're also gonna save this for the topping so there's that nice crunchy bit at the top of it that gets all nice and golden and toasty. We're gonna to add some cinnamon. Ooh, the wind's taking it away with me today. About a teaspoon and a half. We're gonna mix this up really well. And now we're gonna add in a quarter cup of maple syrup. This is our sweet. If you don't like maple syrup, you can always add honey. Just mix this around. And we're gonna let this sit for a minute while we prep our Camp Dutch oven. Now, like I've said, I already have the fire going. I have my charcoal chimney that still has some hot coals in it that we'll be adding to the top. But why we're not preheating this is because I want everything to warm up at once. We're not searing, we're not sauteing. We want to just cook this slowly, Camp Dutch oven style. But there's a trick. Using a deep Dutch oven is the perfect way to make a crisp or a cobbler because there's a lot of room for steam and that's what you want with this. We wanna trap as much steam as possible. And I'm using parchment paper. You don't have to if you don't want to. It's an easy way to help with cleanup. You can also line your Camp Dutch oven with foil. It's no problem. Just take a sheet, press it right in, get it down all the way, and then take another sheet, open it up, and do it in the opposite direction so you have all the walls covered. And like I said, this is strictly for cleanup because the maple syrup and the apples, sometimes they can burn on the bottom of it. Sometimes there's just not a way to prevent it. But by having a double lined parchment paper inside your Camp Dutch oven, that helps with it. So now we're gonna take our apples and pears and granola and ginger, the maple syrup and the cinnamon and add this right to it. Get every little bit. You don't wanna leave anything in the bowl. There we go. 
All right, set that aside. Now it's time to just press everything down into all the corners and then level it out, smooth the top out. Then you can sit here and you can just kind of push the parchment paper around the side just so you know that it's there and don't worry. If it catches on fire, it's not gonna go into the Dutch oven. The lid is gonna prevent that. So you'll just have the char on the outside of the parchment paper, not on the inside. All right, let's take the remainder of the granola and sprinkle it evenly over the top. Oh, that little bee, he's not happy. He really wanted these apples. I think he's coming back for seconds. And I have four tablespoons of melted butter. I'm just gonna swirl this in the pan really quick and I'm gonna drizzle this right over the top. Not only is it gonna add delicious flavor, but it's gonna help with the browning for the granola and the apples. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna place the lid on this, making certain that the paper is sticking out pressing it down and now let's go over to the Camp Dutch oven table and let's see how this is cooked. Okay so I've brought the Camp Dutch oven that has our apples and pears and crystallized ginger and that beautiful granola over to my Camp Dutch oven table. I have more heat at the base of this Camp Dutch oven than I do on top. I have just a little sprinkling of it because I don't want to force a ton of heat down through the Camp Dutch oven because that would cause the granola to burn. And that is what I'm trying to avoid here today. And that is what I'm trying to show you today. So by having a stronger heat source down at the bottom, it's gonna cook those apples and force heat up through the Camp Dutch oven. I'm gonna give this about 10 minutes and then we'll come on back and I'll show you how to do a rotation and check. All right, it's been about 10 minutes and it's time to rotate our Camp Dutch oven. And why do we do that? Well, we have a good amount of heat that's down below the pot. And by rotating it, you're evening out the heat distribution. What if one side was hotter and the other side was cooler? You might get some scorching and burning on one side. So by rotating the entire pot, you're guaranteeing that there's even heat and a less chance for burning. Let me show you how that's done. I'm going to put on my glove. I'm going to lift up the bail wire handle. I'm going to pick this up off of the stand and I'm going to rotate it. And then I'm going to take my lid lifter and I'm going to give the lid an additional 45 degree turn. And now we're going to let this go 10 more minutes and it should be done. Okay, well our second 10 minute time has finished and now it's time to take a look and see if our pear and apple crisp is finished. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh, it is perfectly golden all across the top. The apples still have their pretty pink color and that's what I love about honey crisp apples. They're gonna keep their shape and more importantly, they're gonna keep that beautiful pinky red exterior color. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for a taste. And like I said, this is something that's excellent. Oh my gosh, it's so soft and just perfect. This is excellent for breakfast and just perfect for dessert. And the nice thing about the cleanup, since we've lined it with parchment paper, is that as soon as it cools, I'm just gonna be able to lift this right out, rinse off my Dutch oven, clean it, season it, and then get it ready for its next use. While this cools just a little bit, let me give you a trick about apples. You know, whenever you slice them, they turn brown and they get mushy. There's a way, a very easy way that I learned back at my home ec class back when I was in eighth grade. And it's not using lemon juice. Everybody seems to be using that, but guess what? When you're cooking with cast iron, you can't. It's a reactive acid, meaning that it reacts to the cast iron. And what could happen is your food could end up black. You don't want to serve an apple crisp that's tinged with gray and black. So here's the trick. When you're slicing your apples, fill a bowl with cold water and add about two tablespoons of honey to it. Whisk it really well so it completely dissolves. 
add your sliced apples to that, give it about 15 minutes and then drain them away. I guarantee you, your apples will stay nice and not brown. And here's a better tip. You can do this the night before. You can prep your apples, soak them in the honey water, drain them, then put them in your ice chest or your RV's refrigerator, and it's ready for you to go in the morning. I'm Kate Dunbar, the Campground Gourmet for Rolling On TV. Cook great memories, and I'll see you at the campfire. Bye.